Hi, Spirit 1053 family. Erica here with you. Jumping Jehoshaphat. <laughs> We're going to meet a character in the Bible who you don't really hear about. So let's jump into prayer. And I can't wait for you to hear his story because today it's all going to be about gratitude, but in advance of the victory. So Father God, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, so many of us have prayers that are weighing heavily on our hearts today. Lord, you know each one. You count the hairs on our head. You hold our tears in your bottle. You list them on your scroll. So God, we just thank you in advance for the answers that are coming. We thank you in advance for the victory parties that you have planned. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being with us today and filling us with your presence. Lord, you tell us in your word that where two or three are gathered, there you are right here in the midst of them. So Lord, thank you for joining us as we look at the life of Jehoshaphat today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome in. Let me just see if I can. Okay. Hi there, Jennifer. Good to see you. Okay. We are going to be kind of near the beginning of your Bible in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. All right. You ready? Okay. Sometime later, the Moabites and Ammonites, accompanied by Moonites, I don't even know how to say that, joined forces to make war on Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat received this intelligence report. A huge force is on its way from the Dead Sea to fight you. There's no time to waste. They're already at Hazazon Tamar, the oasis of Engedi. Okay, so Israel is under attack. Jehoshaphat is the king. Do you ever feel like that? By the way, welcome Heidi, Aaron, Rose, Sally, Esther. So, so good to see you. You ever feel like you're under attack, that a big force is on its way to fight you? Well, imagine if that was actually happening physically. Imagine how frightening that would be. So shaken, Jehoshaphat prayed. He went to God for help, love it, and ordered a nationwide fast. The country of Judah united in seeking God's help. They came from all the cities of Judah to pray to God. Then Jehoshaphat took a position before the assembled people of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of God in front of the new courtyard and said, O God, God of our ancestors, are you not God in heaven above and ruler of all kingdoms below? You hold power and might in your fist. No one stands a chance against you. Man, say that to God today with me. No one stands a chance against you. No thing and no one stands a chance against our God. And didn't you make the natives of this land leave as you brought your people Israel in, turning it over permanently to your people Israel, the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived here and built a holy house of worship to honor you, saying, when the worst happens, whether war or flood or disease or famine, and we take our place before this temple, we know you are personally present in this place, and pray out our pain and trouble, we know that you will listen and give victory. I am loving Jehoshaphat. Can I just tell you, listen to what he just said. God hears us when we pray out our pain and trouble. If your pain and trouble is pressing on you today, you got to pray it out. You got to get it out. I just learned moments ago that my grandmother is going to be moving from a rehab where she's been battling the effects of COVID for weeks to a permanent nursing home. And my heart, I mean, every emoji, right? I call 2020 the year of every emoji. It's hard. And we've got to pray out our pain and our trouble. Woo! I'll tell you what. Okay. And he's saying, you will give us victory. He will hear and he will give victory. And now it's happened. Men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir have shown up. You didn't let Israel touch them when we got here at first. We detoured around them and didn't lay a hand on them. And now they've come to kick us out of the country you gave us. Oh, dear God, won't you take care of them? Tell them today, God. Dear God, won't you take care of these troubles that are pressing on my heart? I know you don't have evil countries coming at you in force, but I know there are things pressing on your heart today. You can say to God, won't you take care of them, dear God, just like Jehoshaphat did. 
We're helpless before this vandal horde ready to attack us. We don't know what to do. We're looking to you. Anybody need to look to him today? I do. I've got a situation I've been praying about for years that's pressing on me today, in addition to my grandmother. But I know that looking to God is my only hope. He's our only hope. We can look to him. We don't know what to do. You got a situation like that? You're like, I, I've prayed for years. I don't know what to do. I'm looking to you, God. Just like Jehoshaphat. When we don't know what to do, we can look to him. Everyone in Judah was there. Little children, wives, sons, all present and attentive to God. Let's be present and attentive to God today. Then Jehaziel was moved by the spirit of God to speak from the midst of the congregation. Jehaziel was the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Madaniah, the Levite of the Asaph clan. He said, attention, everyone, all of you from out of town, all of you from Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, God's word, don't be afraid don't pay any mind to this vandal horde. This is God's war, not yours. Tomorrow, you'll go after them. See, they're already on their way up the slopes of Ziz. I got to stop here, though. This is God's war, not yours. Hi, Darlena. Hi, Diana. Are you battle weary, too? Battling on several fronts? This is God's war. It was God's war for Jehoshaphat, God's war for you and for me and all the battles that we're fighting on many fronts. It's powerful stuff. This is God's war, not yours. Tomorrow you'll go after them. They're already up on their way, up the slopes of Ziz. You'll meet them at the end of the ravine near the wilderness of Jeruel. You won't have to lift a hand in this battle. Man, this is powerful stuff. Just stand firm. Judah and Jerusalem and watch God's saving work for you take shape. Don't be afraid. Don't waver. March out boldly. Tomorrow, God is with you. You know, God is with you too. You can stand firm on the rock of the promises in this book. The promises that tell us he will never, ever, ever leave us or forsake us. Okay? I love this story. I love it. Then Jehoshaphat knelt down, bowing with his face to the ground. All Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping God. The Levites, both Kohathites and Korahites, I don't know if I'm saying any of these right, so I'm sorry to all of the ites, stood to their feet to praise God, the God of Israel. They praised at the top of their lungs. They were up early in the morning, ready to march into the wilderness of Tekoa. As they were leaving... You're going to love this. Jehoshaphat stood up and said, listen, Judah and Jerusalem, listen to what I have to say. Believe firmly in God, your God, and your lives will be firm. Believe in your prophets and you'll come out on top. After talking it over with the people, Jehoshaphat appointed a choir for God. Dressed in holy robes, they were to march ahead of the troops singing Give thanks to God. His love never quits. Okay, so you've got this. What did we read earlier in this chapter? A huge force is on its way from the Dead Sea to fight you. And Jehoshaphat calls the nation together to unite and to fast and to pray. And he organizes a choir to sing to God and to say, give thanks to God because his love never quits. Okay. Okay. How powerful is worship music? How powerful is it to stop in the middle of your situation while you're battling on every front and to just stop and praise Jesus and thank him, not just for what he's done in the past, but what he's doing right now for what he's doing right now, for what he's going to do in the future. Thank him in advance. This is the life of Jehoshaphat. This is his story. As soon as they started shouting and praising, God sent ambushes against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir as they were attacking Judah, and they all ended up dead. The Ammonites and Moabites mistakenly attacked those from Mount Seir and massacred them. So now they're turning on each other. 
Then further confused, they went at each other and all ended up killed. As Judah came up over the rise, looking into the wilderness for the horde of barbarians, they looked on a killing field of dead bodies, not a living soul among them. When Josephat and his people came to carry off the plunder, they found more loot than they could carry off. Equipment, clothing, valuables. It took three days to cart it away. On the fourth day, they came together at the Valley of Blessing, Barakah, and blessed God. That's how it's got its name. Valley of Blessing. Jehoshaphat then led all the men of Judah and Jerusalem back to Jerusalem, an exuberant parade. God had given them joyful relief from their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and came to the temple of God with all of the instruments of the band playing. When the surrounding kingdoms got word that God had fought Israel's enemies, God had fought Israel's enemies, the fear of God descended on them. Jehoshaphat heard no more from them. As long as Jehoshaphat reigned, peace reigned. Anybody craving peace? Me. <laughs> okay, let's just read that part one more time because I really like that. When the surrounding kingdoms got word that God had fought Israel's enemies, the fear of God descended upon them. Jehoshaphat heard no more from them. As long as Jehoshaphat reigned, peace reigned. You know, I think it's safe to say that God, the Lord of the universe, was on the throne of Jehoshaphat's heart. He had a huge problem that was literally marching toward him. He went straight to God. He brought the people straight to God. He fasted, he prayed, and he praised. He organized a choir when there were armies marching against him. I don't know, Valerie, who is marching against you today? Charles, I don't know. I, I see your cousin Kim has COVID. I'm so sorry, Lord, please heal her. I don't know who is marching against you, but I know who is fighting for you. It is the same God. I have chills from the book of Second Chronicles. Same God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I think what you and I need to do is to thank God in advance for what he's about to do, to stand firm on the promises of his word today. Maybe in the comments, you can do this, Heidi. Thank you. Maybe you can take a stand today in the comments, say, God, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do and fill in the blank. God, I thank you in advance today that you're going to take care of my grandmother, who's almost 90, uh, that she's going to make friends at this nursing home. I thank you for the fact that she's going to enjoy good food that's always hot. I thank you in advance that, Lord, we're going to figure out how to communicate with her better so that we can FaceTime with her and not just talk on the jitterbug. Lord, I thank you in advance that you have figured all of this out. So what are you going to thank him for? You and I can take Jehoshaphat's example and live it out. This is not dusty old words in a dusty old book. This is living. This book is alive. It's your handbook and my handbook for how to live in this world. We are aliens in this world. Okay. So what can you thank him for? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe at Krista Shores. Amen. What are you going to thank him for? I can't wait to see. Hey, it's so good having your company. Thank you for being here. And I will see you tomorrow. Remember. You are loved.